After a very mild winter in Ohio, it's really no surprise that the wheat crop is about two to three weeks early across the state. What is a surprise, according to Matt Hutchison, product manager with Seed Consultants Incorporated, is how good the wheat crop looks, especially after a change in the weather in March. You might be a little surprised on the conditions of some fields, especially a field like this. Um, you maybe would have expected some more freeze damage or frost damage because we had uh, some freezing weather towards the end of March and the uh, beginning of spring that we were worried about a potential issue, but walking this field, we can't find any damaged heads, so that's a good sign. And with the mild winter and those freezing temperatures early in the spring, you would have expected some more issues possibly, but uh, this field here, uh, no issues in terms of damage due to the winter weather. At this particular field, uh, a fungicide and an insecticide were applied because of reports of cereal leaf beetle showing up and also because of powdery mildew, although there's not much sign of either here uh, that we can find today. That wheat field may look good from the road, but getting out into the field and actually seeing what's happening from the top down is a good idea. That's right, you need to pay attention to the whole plant, uh, whether you're looking at the head for head scab, uh, gloom blotch, looking at the stem, at the leaves for other diseases, and then looking at the roots for root rots. There's a whole variety of diseases that you could come across and it's important to walk your field and look at the entire plant, and maybe even dig up a few plants to look at the roots as well. Right next to this field was some Seed Consultants wheat plots, a chance for Hutchison and his crew to figure out what varieties worked and what didn't. We did find a few varieties here with some pressure, mostly uh, powdery mildew. We found a variety that had a little more powdery mildew than others, showing some lesions on the leaves and some of the mildew growth on the stems. That helps you assess what varieties have stronger resistance, kind of helps you make decisions as to what varieties to plant moving forward and what varieties may have some weaker problems that you want to avoid in the future. Hutchison also gave an update on the progress of the corn this spring. It's kind of hit or miss. In some areas, the crops planted in that April 22nd week, especially towards the end, the 25th, 26th, 27th of April. There are some that made it out okay. Then there was a lot of that crop that went in the ground those days that had to be replanted. Uh, there was some corn and some soybeans, both, that the seeds still appeared viable uh, the end of last week, but you had a crust due to heavy rains. And although the seed was still viable, uh, corn seeds were starting to leaf out underground due to the crust and soybean seeds were having trouble emerging. So that last week of April, uh, some of that crop has to be replanted and some of that's going on right now. For the Ohio AgNet, I'm Ty Higgins reporting.